Hello, Julian. Hello, Mike. Oh, who do we have on tonight? Well, she describes herself as just a gardener. Just a gardener? Yeah. Hmm, she must do something more than that, surely. Well, I think she does. I think you're going to be fascinated. Should we get her in? Her name's Go Sarah on, Cotton. Sarah Cotton, let's have her on. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Brampton. And my name is Julian Hope. Welcome to Veterinary Ramblings. Hello, Sarah. I'm Mike. Hello, Mike. Lovely How to you meet do? you. And you. Hello, Sarah. I'm Julian. You can tell me because I'm the one with the whiskers. Yeah, I'm great. Some as well, look. Yeah, I know, but yeah. Me as well. Well, let's start. Let's start at the beginning then, Sarah. Once yeah. upon a time, <laughs> <laughs> you just described yourself as just a gardener. Um. Well, I I am. Well, I'm a gardener that does other things, but uh, I'm not a techie per- person in as much as I, I don't do anything techie. I am just a gardener, but mm. I do I do a lot of swimming and animal rescue and other things. But my okay. my job, my part time job is just a gardener, so be so. a head gardener on a private I, estate. <laughs> I was going to say any gardeners who are listening to this, we never, ever, ever, ever use the term just a gardener ever no no I'm I'm if very you can about yourself in a self-deprecating way <laughs> or, or just, just an anything or just, just an anything for that matter uh, so sarah have you always been a gardener i haven't always been a gardener i started my career as a firefighter and um my career came to a very abrupt end when i was 30 years old when i fell 50 feet offshore and flyover and um, attending a road traffic accident involving a blood donor lorry that had crashed. And uh, we all found it, you know, expecting to find blood all over the road, which which there wasn't. Um, Sadly, the driver was trapped. And in my attempt to climb over the barrier to reach her, uh, I fell. It's very difficult to describe, but it was obviously December, it was raining, the front of the lorry had um, come out and was straddling the gap in the flyover where the, the road, one road departs from another. Mm. And in all the lights and everything, it looked just like road. So I climbed over the barrier to try and reach this lady and there was no road. So I just I just fell straight through the flyover. <laughs> and I remember wow. falling through the air and just thinking, oh my God, what the have I done? Yeah, and I remember it very clearly. You could see the, yeah. the infrastructure of the flyover and my arms were flailing like that. It took ages. Your life doesn't flash before your eyes. You just know you're going to die and oh shit. Yes. You know, basically. And then uh, thud. I landed and then I I must have passed out or something. And then I came, mm. I came round and... I could hear people shouting at me, we can see you, sir, we can see you. And I could see a flashlight. And then the next mm. thing, um, I was being attended to by the medics. Anyway, wow. I ended up in um, Worthing Hospital in high dependency mm-hmm. for several weeks. And then I was moved up to St. George's, the pelvic unit at St. George's. In Tooting. In Tooting, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. And I spent a month or so there. And then I was moved back down to Worthing. No, back to Southlands. And so you had um, spinal surgery? I didn't have spinal surgery in the end because by the time I got up, some, up to St George's, well, three weeks to a month later, and they, and they thought actually it's better just to leave it well alone at that point. Yeah. So yeah. Right. Um, I had my ankle pinned. One of my ankles was quite badly broken, so that was pinned. But other than that, no, no other surgery. I had broken ribs and a head injury. But, um, so I spent three months in hospital initially. Mm-hmm. And then I came out in a wheelchair and, well, I had to learn to walk again with one of these big, um, it's like a giant Zimmer frame. Yes. So I came out in a wheelchair and on crutches and um, I I went back to swimming and doing stuff that I'd done before. I was a triathlete before uh, the accident. And eventually, eventually, uh, after about a year, I attempted to go back to work having been told I possibly wouldn't walk again um I right. did actually go back on light duties back, well, to, back, back to being a firefighter 
well yeah but I was on, I was on light duty so essentially not supposed to be doing anything but I, was, I went out on a training um, exercise with them and during the course of that we got a we got a shout so I actually went back to work I went on a shout and then um, very shortly after that it was quite clear that my injuries were going to be career ending right. so I was I was let go from the fire brigade and um, twiddling my thumbs at home, I was sort of on the dole and uh, didn't know what to do with myself. And my brain was turning to mush. So I went back to college. I studied horticulture. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this was sort of some time later. Um, mm. And then I had another major operation on my ankle and I had it pinned and fused. So I actually missed the first day of college and then had to go. I was that was a week in hospital then. And then I was months and months in plaster, missed the first day of college. And then I was back in college again on crutches and in a wheelchair. Mm. Um, but anyway, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to be on the dole all my life. I had to do something. So sure. you know, re- wow. retrained horticulture. And that's how I ended up as a gardener. However, um, my tutor at college was the head gardener at Bigner Park Estate. And I went to work for him at Bigner Park mm-hmm. Estate, the Lord and Lady Mersey. And I was there 10 years before I got a head gardener's position at a private estate in Storrington. And then my friend John, who was the head gardener, now works for me. <laughs> Which is right. a nice little circular thing. So yeah. you, you, you won't be popping around to cut my lawn? next week then don't do, don't do grass sorry and, and the hedge you can't trim, trim the hedge. I'm, I'm quite good at mate, 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 we, we, we can't afford to pay her to be on we ain't gonna be able to afford to pay her to do the hedge and the lawn is are we True. well then my, my mother-in-law was saying the other day she needs a bush trim <laughs> <laughs> she's welcome yeah <laughs> I, I hate cutting grass oh i don't even cut my own grass if i can get away with it but topiary is quite good, but um, mm. I, get, I get people into, you know, it's a, it's a huge estate, so we have contract gardeners and uh, contract cutters for that sort of thing. You, you, have, you have to come round and and, um, and see my orchids. I'd love to see your orchids. You're yeah. not live on the show, please. Give it a rest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, actually, no, it's a good point, because we, we know that uh, from previous discussion uh, on, on orchids, uh, the word uh, orchid is, is rather a naughty one, isn't it? So... <laughs> Uh, there was no euphemism intended there. But I said, come around and see my orchids. Ah. The, the plant there. So, yeah. Do you honestly have a fascination with orchids? Or I love just... them. Yeah. I love them, yes. All 27,000 species of them. I've, I've got a very, very... But they're, they're, kind, they're kind of ugly, aren't they? The flowers are extremely beautiful, but the plant itself is quite ugly. I have one at work, and it's a white one. And mm. I, hate, I hate white flowers, but anyway, I was given this... Mm flat plant and it's got a white flower i'm not happy about that but they're just so ugly the plant itself fits yeah it's not one of those with the great i can't i'm not, not an expert with orchids but it doesn't have the lovely big glossy leaves it's got absolutely isn't it there's no wonderful foliage there's no verdant greenery to it they're spindly little things sometimes fat sort of globose yeah that's what thing. it is yeah and well, they're, they're the most flower, amazing. To top it all, it's got a white flower. Uh, no, do, do you know, I'm with you on that. I can't stand white flowers. I think there are so many colours in the world. Why, why put them all together and create white in one? It's just dull, isn't it? No, I don't like white flowers in gardens. I, I think that the, the, all, the trend for all white flowers, you know, and, and green. Uh, uh, sorry, what I'm intrigued by here, Sarah, mm-hmm. is from all action firefighter mm-hmm. to, to horticulture. Mm-hmm. Why did you choose horticulture? Well, it wasn't it wasn't my first choice. Uh, I did have a go at silversmithing because I I went to art college right as a youngster. So I've always been sort of creative, and I thought, oh, I, I love silver jewellery. You know, I won't wear silver. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll so I did a course in silversmithing, uh, but I, I wasn't very good at it. And it was a, it was an evening course, right? And um, Oh, look at that piece of silver. Wow. This is, this is a piece. I'm holding up a sheet of a nickel sheet. silver. And I've just got a few bits cut off there. Uh, I, I do silver smithing. I don't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Believe it, Sarah. <laughs> You're going to have to 
show me that as well? Well, well when you go around to look at your book. Is my, is my <laughs> piercing <laughs> sore? There we go. Wow. So, wow. okay, so you, you thought, I'm, I'm not a fighter anymore. I don't have the talents of Julian, so I, I binned that idea. And I, yeah. I had a garden at the moment at the time, and um, I didn't have a clue as to what I was doing. And uh, I just thought, oh, I'll, you know, I, I, I literally just scrolled through the college prospectus mm. to see what I'd like to do. Theology, right. quite interested in that, but I'm, I'm a bit more creative. So I thought, oh, horticulture, I'll be able to do my own garden. And it, it was literally as random as that. So, wow. Yeah, I studied with the, the I did an, an RHS syllabus. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, I've been really, really lucky with my career to, you know, have worked where I have worked and to be working where I'm working now, which is a fabulous place. Yes, fantastic. Fantastic. But I, w- I want to come back to this accident because this, this is a major trauma. This is a this is a turning point in your life. And yeah. it, it's difficult sometimes to see silver linings when the shit has literally hit the fan and you're battling and it hurts and it's painful. It's a long way ahead and it's difficult to see quite where you're heading to. Was there anything that you fell back on or any of your, was there a particular therapy that you, you really clung to that sort of helped drive you through this? Well, I mean, during all... I think, I think fell back on and drive through are <laughs> probably the wrong terms to use on them. I think that's I apologize. Yeah, my colleague. <laughs> Sorry. There were there were several things. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm an upbeat sort of person anyway, and I, I was a triathlete. Right. But through all of this, I've I've had animals. I mean, I had four dogs at the time of my accident. Mm-hmm. So I was I was super fit, running, cycling. You know, tremendous group of friends, and and four little dogs that had to be walked. Right. You know, right. no matter what state I was in when I came out of hospital, they wanted. A walk so I had to get up and do stuff you know not one to sit about anyway um so they I've always had an animal of some sort dogs primarily in, in the last 30 years but right. um yeah and always re- little rescue dogs um I've got pigeons at the moment but you know all, all they, don't, they don't need walks on the day <laughs> basis, <laughs> no you're okay with those Sarah it's uh, that's that's absolutely fine <laughs> But yeah, little dogs and and keeping fit. I I swim a lot. Um, after my accident, the dog uh, the doctors said to me because I, I struggle with really bad backache, or at least I did. So and you're, not gonna, well, you're not going to ride a bike, and you're not going to go running. Well, you say that. Okay. <laughs> now here, so, here's where <laughs> here's where it gets interesting. The, doc, the doctor right. said to me. I, I got backache all the time, even when I swim, which was, you know, I love swimming and running and all this sort of thing. And he said, well, really, no swimming. If you must swim, a little bit of gentle backstroke and no gardening, you know, really, because that's that's not good for your back. So obviously, I'm, you know, now I'm working as a gardener and swimming was the only thing I could do out of the triathlon that I, that I was left with. But, so how long after he said no swimming... Yeah, did you start did you swimming? swim the channel? Yeah, I swam, I swam the channel. Well, I mean, you don't, you don't just, you don't just. Well, I mean, it was some years later, but I, I sort of built up to that. I, I got back into swimming, and um, I just start. I, 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 I can't not swim. I mean, that's just part of my DNA is is being a swimmer. So I started doing Pilates to strengthen my core muscles. That I thought would help support my back. You know, I was right. trying to. I don't. I'm not one of those gobbling painkillers and sitting back and thinking, "Oh, the well, doctor says actually I, I, I better not. I'll just sit and watch telly all day." You know, that I just can't do that. So right. I thought, well, I'm, there's got to be another way. So I strengthened my core muscles by doing Pilates, and I I just massively up the swimming. Ridiculous <laughs> 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 amount. Massive, um, ma- massively up to the swimming. So yeah. So Julian said that swam the channel, and I've got a feeling he's not joking. No, he's not. He's not so joking. you went from you went from potentially, well, definitely life changing injuries to swimming the channel, which for our listeners who are unaware is a strip of land, a strip of water between England. And France, 
keeps the little blighters away. That's what yes, I it say. Keeps the, well, it, it, it's it's uh, protected. It's protected our shores from a lot of people, hasn't it? Like uh, it's protected our shores months. from from fifty five BC. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And the Spanish Armada and and Hitler and didn't yeah. do much good against the Vikings though, did it? But but anyway, that's another Not story. Not a lot. No, it's got... twenty one miles. It's the, the twenty one miles. Swim. Is twenty one miles, and it's oh, the open water, event. open water ocean swim of twenty one miles. Yeah, and it's, it's not warm, busy, is it? Busiest shipping lanes in the world, and cold, cold water. Yeah. Oh. Well, I didn't just jump in and decide I'm going to swim the channel. You build, you build up to these things, and um, right. I did. Someone, someone asked me once to join in a relay, swim the channel in a relay. Okay. And, so that's a six person relay. That's a, a classic English Channel relay. <clears throat> and I, I thought, well, hang on. Whoa, 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 That's a classic. What <laughs> the classic? Like, yeah, we all know it, the classic one. The tiny. But this is a regular. Really this is a regular thing. There are groups <laughs> of people is, there. Yeah, who's going to be the sixth man? Because we're going to go and swim the channel next week. You'd be surprised how many people want to have a go at swimming the channel. But th- right. this is a long time ago. I mean, this is about um, I don't know, ten years ago, I suppose. Someone asked me if I would join their crew. You know, join the group and swim the channel. Right. And I, I was quite a good swimmer. I've always been quite a good swimmer and I can swim for an hour. So you, you swim an hour in rotation. Okay. Six of you. Mm-hmm. And uh, the average time to swim the channel is about 14 hours. Right. So mm-hmm. if there's six of you, you know, some of you are going to swim twice. Maybe somebody might swim a third time and you've got five hours on the boat. Mm-hmm. Well, right. off we went. And I thought I completely underestimated how hard i thought lovely jubbly day out on a boat pack my bikini top up the pan <laughs> pack lunch picnic super. yeah sounds good how, to me. how wrong i was <laughs> it's the most horrific experience of my life absolutely horrific seasick cold oh it was just ghastly i had to swim three times I was lucky enough to get the touch at France, so that, that was nice. Oh, but brilliant. The whole, yeah. the whole experience was just ghastly. And then the following year, another group of friends... Uh, hang on, hang on. So you decided you'd never do anything like that ever again? No, I didn't. I got asked to do it again, to join another um, group. And I thought, I had such an awful experience. I've got to do it again to have a positive experience. You know, this is an iconic swim. It and is. other people have had fantastic times. Hmm. Oh my god, it's the best day of my life, you know, blah, blah blah. So I thought, right, I'll do it again. Oh god, it was awful. It was awful. No better than a seasick, horrific. So that was and this it. is so sea, seasick while you're actually swimming. Swimming on the boat in the sea. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't have sea legs at all. It was mm-hmm. ghastly, ghastly experience. Anyway, put that behind me and I went to watch a friend of mine. He had he entered a swim, a 10-kilometer swim at Brighton Beach. And we all went to watch him. The thought of anybody swimming 10 kilometers without stopping. I mean, what a hero. I mean, he was at wow, we were all on the beach clapping mm-hmm. him. Just amazing. And I thought, I well, I can do that. I can we can do that. I was so inspired. I can do that. So the next year. I had a go. And indeed, I couldn't do it. <laughs> right. I couldn't do it. I did about seven and a half kilometres and I got terribly cold. Mm-hmm. Got out. And I was so, so angry with myself because I believed I could do it. I really believed I could do it. So the next weekend, with the guy that had already done it, we went out offshore and beach and we swam 10 kilometres because I, well. I knew I could do it. Anyway, he then goes and does something else. He swam two lengths of Lake Windermere. That's ten and a half miles. Two lengths. Two lengths. So this isn't two lengths of your pool. This is two lengths. Ten of Lake and a Windermere. half miles each way. Twenty-one miles. My God. Do you know, I, I was thought, I was proud it, of myself. I swam Lake Coniston once, and I thought, ah. oh yeah, who the man? Who the man? Well, that's five and a quarter miles. Yeah. Did you do the whole length. I did one length. And I had to get some friends to pick me up at the other end because I couldn't swim back. And you swam four times then. No, he, he swam. He swam two lengths and I crewed for him. I thought, I reckon I can do that. Mm-hmm. But it's all his fault, really. 
So the next year, I did that. I I swam there and back. Of course, I I, I beat his time, which is always you know. Really <laughs> <laughs> bonus. It was all about. I'm yeah. competitive or anything like that. And then he swam the channel <laughs> on his first attempt, on his third attempt, and I cruised mm-hmm. it. On, I mean, he's he's a real he's a real inspiration to me actually. He had three goes at it, and I crewed for him, and he did it. I thought, you know, I I reckon I can do that, mm-hmm. and so I did, and I beat his time by about four hours. <laughs> <laughs> did it eleven and a half hours, which is which is, well. and I, I just had the swim of my life. It was fantastic. So on the boat coming back from France. I thought, do you know what? I reckon I can swim back again. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you jumped off the two. boat. <laughs> well, no, not that case. Not, not that day. You could have it again, <laughs> but I believed I could do a two-way channel. Right. Because I just had the best swim ever swimming there, and Ju- Julian knows knows what happened. Yeah. But yeah. I trained for fifty-nine weeks, and I did not miss a minute, a single minute of training. Right. And it included 10-hour training swims, back-to-back six hours. I mean, uh, the hours and hours and hours and hours and hours I put into it. And then it got delayed because of bad weather. Um, and then my, my beloved little dog died. And then we got the go-ahead, and the weather was just dreadful. And I didn't I didn't get to do it after yeah. all that. <laughs> got disaster on the day. I, how... I, I can't imagine the amount of time and effort and energy and the focus. Oh, I can't either. When I look at my diary. Do you know, the, the, the funny thing, I feel a bit of a fraud here because I, I Mike's saying he, he can't understand that. And Mike was a professional cyclist, a professional speed skier. Um, wow. I, I've, I've done, you know, I've done some ops that have taken several hours. And, and I've done a lot of climbing. I've trained, oh, a good three or four hours a week. <laughs> you, you guys are just an order of magnitude higher than that. You, ha- you have to really want it. You have mm. to really want it. I mean, I went in the sea about two weeks ago, and I, I thought, oh, God, actually, I'm, I'm just, I'm over it. I'm so over it. I, I just, it was just all encompassing for over a year. I didn't think about anything else. I didn't. See my friends very much I didn't you know I turned down mm. nights out I was up at five o'clock in the morning to swim for four hours before work after work it was just everything I wanted it so badly and I believed I could do it I, I still believe I can do it you know, I, I, I know from, from what you said I know you can do it <laughs> I know you could have done it. So I've got to raise the money to do it again so are you going to do it well it's six and a half thousand pounds so not not immediately <laughs> Right. I sold but, my Land Rover to pay for it. I had a beautiful Land Rover. Oh, it's a lovely Rover white Land Rover. I sold. Yeah, I sold it. Yeah. So how much how much swimming are you doing now? Not not so much. <laughs> I do about <laughs> four hours a week now, which is not much. But now the next challenge is I've started running again and um the girl that coached me or wrote my training program for both my channel, my swim and my attempt, um, is my swim run partner. So I don't know if you've heard about swim run. It's the most fantastic, exciting, relatively new sport where you, you race as a twosome attached with a bungee. Mm. And it's a real adventure sport, like from A to B. So it's you swim across this whatever lake and then you run up a hill and then you swim across a bay and then you run around and, and it goes on for hours and hours. They're like 40 or 50 kilometers long or, or the short version that we do is about 25 kilometers long. And it's just the most fun because you're doing it with somebody else. I know. Do you, know you, you, you talked about inverted here. I, I did a similar, well, not, not very similar, but I think called a, uh, a drink eat. And, and so with with a with a pal, you, you're bungeed together, and you, you have to you, you got to it's breakfast, and then you little little light elevens is it's fun as well. It's fun, it's fun, and you got to try and navigate your way home afterwards. And there's you know there's a drink in each section. And I've said before, vodka is so much more than than just a breakfast drink, but it's <laughs> harsh, it's harsh, and, and a, a little Negroni for for elevens is 
you, know, you need that bungee. You're crawling in on it at the end of the day. It's, so I feel I feel the, 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 the fun and the pain there, Sarah. I think, um, yeah, doing it with somebody else is much more fun. I did it with myself, actually. <laughs> do, you, do you not get odd looks, Julian, when you walk into the fifth pub and you've got your, your two wrists bungee strapped together? I did get some odd looks, mate. I did, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm used to those. Oops, oops, I've lost my partner. I wonder where they've gone. <laughs> I think he wants a drink as well. I better pour it for him. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> so you have a bungee strap. Yeah. We, right. we have a bungee strap. Uh, I mean, it's a proper swim run thing, but I mean, essentially, it's just like a long, a long bungee, and you, <laughs> you swim, you swim in your wetsuit, obviously, and then you run in your wetsuit, and you swim in your trainers. <laughs> You you Ooh. you you set off from point A with all your kit, and you've got to have like a bandage and a whistle because it's like an adventure. There's no sort of health and safety or anything. It's a real adventure sport, and um, off you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking chafing here. No, I've, I've tried running in a wetsuit. No, no, it's a swim run wetsuit, so they're properly designed. Yeah, you wouldn't oh, okay. run in a in a regular wetsuit. No, it's a proper yeah. swim run wetsuit, and the shoes are proper swim run shoes, so they drain of water. And mm. the beauty of, of my partner is she's an ultra marathon runner, a really good one. So she, I know, because I'm disabled, I've got a fused ankle. My running is very poor. So mm. she sort of pulls me along on the runs, and then obviously swimming, that are my thing. And you, you wear paddles. I've got enormous hands anyway. But on top of that, you, you wear a paddle. So I pull her in the swims. So we do quite, we do quite hmm. well. So <laughs> what, what, and on the very I... first event, we podiumed. Because wow. the sea was so rough. No, kind of nobody could, could swim in it. But I'm, I'm used to swimming in really rough sea. We, we managed to get rounds and we got on the podium. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's incredible. Yeah, I, had her. I, I yeah. I'm sort of picturing her sort of um, almost water skiing behind you as your arms <laughs> whirl around with these great big paddles. And she's yeah. going to be the. Well, I'm, I'm hanging on like this on the runs. Just sitting back, <laughs> sitting back, being towed along by her feet with her head behind, or, or, or sort of standing up and holding onto the bungee strap. And, and no, there, there's quite, there's quite an art to being towed. You've got to be quite streamlined and and all that sort of thing. She, she's very yeah. good. At that so do you, so you really actually happy. tow her? Yeah, yeah. Well, she's swimming as well. I mean, she's swimming, mm. but because I'm the more powerful swimmer. Yeah. I, I. I you know, she couldn't go as fast if she was on mm. her own. So, and I, I certainly couldn't go as fast on the run without her help. So, we're a real team in as much as we really need each other to get round, and that's the fun yeah. of it. Really. That, that sounds fantastic. It's it's brilliant. Brilliant. It's really amazing. Yeah. Uh, I, I do I did a thing called no, no, <laughs> yeah, Mike. Mike, no. you, Mike and I no. are going to do this next year. No, let's let's mute Julian. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, excuse us for a second. I'm just going to ju- mute Julian because because <laughs> I think he's probably been drinking. I have hardly touched. No, it. hardly. Hard. No. Well, did, didn't you? Am I am I misremembering this? But didn't you um, have a a job with swimming holidays, and you took no, people from one. No, I didn't have a job doing that. I, th- there are these holidays um, where you, you swim from island to island. Yes, that's right. Oh, so you, yeah, the holidays. I, I, th- I, thought, I thought you worked on the, on the company that did it, but you had just a holiday yeah. where you, you swim to the next island because it's cheaper. Yeah, ferry, <laughs> their logo was ferry, ferries are for wimps. Let's swim. Mm-hmm. And so, you, yeah, don't, you, you, you tow your tent and your sleeping bag behind <laughs> you in a little, little blow-up. Rafting. There, there, there are those holidays now, but they they weren't they mm. evolved from this that I that I used to do, and that people still do, and they're the most terrific fun. You can swim. There's a boat. You have a boat with you, and you have um, someone in a kayak or a little speedboat or whatever, and it's fabulous. They in in beautiful beautiful places. I mean, I did it in Greece and Croatia and Malta and all these fabulous places, and um, you can swim. Well, it's not very far, really. Three kilometres, you know, mm. maybe five kilometres a day. So it is a holiday, um, but it's it's great fun if you love swimming. 
Yeah. Right. So I've, I've done that in Greece a couple of times. And there's one place, um, Kalimnos, which is a fantastic climbing island. Oh. And there's a little island next to it called Telendos. Uh, and, and there's a, a wonderful climb up the, the, the pike of, of Telendos. And I was there with, um, uh, with some friends and my wife a few years back. And we said, well, there's a little, little ferry that goes over to Telendos. And I looked at it and said, do you know, I mean, expensive. By the time I'll swim. By the time you'd driven to the ferry, got on the ferry and got over, and I reckon I could swim it at that time. Uh, and this friend of mine said, God, I'll, I'll do it with you. And we won. Brilliant. We, we, beat, we beat them. It was only it was three quarters of a mile, wasn't far. And uh, I was... I lost a bit. I was absolutely knackered at the end. Oh. And they said, uh, they said well, should we climb now? And I said, well, Dad, you know, the nice looking cafe over there. <laughs> I can see, see some calamari, a bit of taramasalada, you know, maybe, maybe a mythos or two. But it's so <laughs> My real great, thought was, I can't more. walk anymore. Coming <laughs> <laughs> to an island. Oh, I can see it. If you can see it, you can swim to it. That's what I, I reckon. Yeah. So, yep. It's a great sense of achievement, isn't it? Oh, wonderful. You've really good. Have you, have you noticed that big? Have you noticed at night sometimes there's a big white thing in the sky? You can swim to that. <laughs> it reflects on the sea. Yeah. And you yeah. Can swim to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I really believe if you can see it, you can swim to it. I think so. Yeah. What happens when it goes into the sea and and you can't see it anymore? Oh, I don't know. You can no, I haven't been there. Oh. Night swimming, that's a whole different ball game. I'm going to pull myself to really control, control your mind when you swim at night. Yeah. You see all sorts of things. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've done a few. I haven't done any long distance swims. Uh, well, I I've only done that one and, and the Coniston one. But I've, I've done a few swims around the beach at night in this country and in Greece, places like that. And it is frightening. Because you, my, you my mind plays swim. tricks. Yeah, my channel swim started at 1.30 in the morning. Mm. And, yeah, so it's a, it's a very different experience, and you do have to control your mind. Well, swimming channel is a bit of a mind game anyway, but, yeah, you've got, obviously, the blackness of the sea. You've got a, a light on the back of your hat and the lights mm. on the boat that are following you. So it's, it's just a kaleidoscope of lights, and you I mean, it's like sensory deprivation. You yeah. can't sort of see anything or hear anything. And at the same time, it's sensory overload because you've got the water and the lights and the and, and then you start, you know, you do wonder what's well, you try not to wonder what's what's down there. And you can see bubbles. Absolutely, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing down there at you, night, even there in the daytime. So how do you navigate? You got a boat with you. Behind you. Got a boat you. With you. you. You follow the boat. Do you follow, follow the, boat. the boat or is the boat behind you? No, no, you have the boat, uh, it should be alongside you. So the right. boat, you've got to get permission. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to swim to France and off you go and your mate's in a fishing boat. You know, it's all very, very official. You've got to book it years in advance. There's only a certain is, is that right? I didn't realise hold, hold that. Hold, hold, hold on a moment. Hold on. T- Tony, I won't, I won't need the dinghy tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, mate. No, you've got a day off. Thanks, thanks. No, no passport. Okay, cheers. <laughs> sorry, sorry, you were saying. You do have to take your passport as well, actually. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. You, book it, you book it years in advance because there's only a certain number of boats that are registered with the Channel Swimming Authority to, you know, have permission to take swimmers across. So it's terribly official. You've got to book it years in advance. People from all over the world want to swim the English Channel. And so, yeah, you do have a boat with you. So that's something that um, if you are planning to swim the channel, you need to practice swimming alongside a boat because it's a very different experience to mm-hmm. swimming on your own with a group of friends. <laughs> OK, so you're you're bobbing around in the water with a little light on your hat. And yeah. you've got a little boat beside you. How do you cope with this is one of the this is the busiest shipping line in the world. With super well, I don't. Tankers. You don't. I don't worry about that. But the swimmer doesn't worry about that. The navigation is all down to the boat pilot, which is why you, you know you pay them three thousand mm-hmm. pounds to France. So you know they're they're hugely experienced. You know, and they navigate and they've got permissions and you know they mm-hmm. they know what they're doing basically. So it's not it's not down to you to worry about that. All you've got to do is swim. 
So you're all, still worried you've about feeding you. All you've got to do. That, that's all you've in the, the do same is... voice that says only a gardener. All you've got to do. All you've got to do, yeah. I'm, I'm just no, you know, there's no point you worrying about the shit that's coming along because you can't see it. I, I'm, I just picture this pilot going, Hey, Bill, I can see you on the radar here. And listen, can you back it off three knots, please? Mm. Because, yeah, yeah, start backing it off now because in an hour and a quarter's time, you're going to run over our swimmer if you carry on at that rate. <laughs> you know, I don't know how they do it. Who, who, yeah, who knows the. Uh technicalities of how they do that because obviously some swimmers are very very slow and some are, are you know very quick so i don't know how they how they work that out I, i'm just trying to picture it's, it's sort of like trying <laughs> to cross the trying to cross the freeway isn't it yeah well you you, you tell them exactly who who <coughs> how you're going to swim etc so they can work out when to set you off yeah knowing that there's a super tanker just leaving oslo mm. yeah I don't know, Mike. I don't know how they do it. So, so looking at their watch, Magic. thinking, I hope she swims a bit quicker. <laughs> I guess they, I guess they just sort of, de- you know, just shuffle you along. No, no, no just a little bit. Yeah. So you, you, you probably haven't swum twenty-one miles. You've probably swum twenty-seven miles because they've been I, zigzagging I you around. Right. I'm thirty-six miles. Yeah, you do, you do because of the tides and things as well. So you. Yes. That's yeah, right. It's, it's, it's like it's like the distance of plane flies, isn't it? It's never it's never the atlas distance. It, it's always a distance which brings into consideration the uh, the reverse distance of the of the winds and things. Yeah. So, and with the swimming the channel, you're crossing tides and currents. So that you know, the, we're swimming across, and the tides coming in going out mm. we're trying to get across it so you never swim very rarely swim in a straight line and i i swam on a spring tide so it's even a bigger oh wow huge of yeah. water so you get a big sort of s shape in your your route that you swim mm. wow yeah incredible yeah. i was thinking back to this little swim i had in crete yeah we're not going to talk about your little swim night time i don't know i don't know <laughs> No, 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 we're not going to talk about this. I, 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 want to, I want to learn some more. I want to learn some more from Sarah. What, when but, you say you want to learn some more, do you want to learn some more in a short space of time? Yeah. Well, listen, didn't, do you remember when Sarah came on, she said she'd actually heard or seen some veterinary ramblings? She had. In do which you, do case? Think, uh, do you do think, think she, she might have seen some... 60 oh, seconds CPD. Oh, some 60 seconds. If, if we whisper, she can't hear us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. What do you oh my gosh, you're going to get your clock out. Can gonna, I put my... Excuse me? <laughs> I really said you big clock out. <laughs> Excuse me? Big clock out. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a timer here. Uh-huh. I've, I've got a timer here that will, will, will go to exactly one minute. Oh my God. Right. So you know I'm, what I'm going to talk about? I lost it. You guys carry on. Do you know what I'm, I'm going to talk I'm just, about? I'm just refusing. I'm just refusing <laughs> to, 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 be, to be goaded by. I've, I've no of... idea how long I'm. I know I've got 60 seconds, but I've no, no idea how long this is going to take me. Such, such a cheap shot. Right. Well, I'm going to whip my clock out. (laughs) Good. So, Sarah Cotton, have you come across 60-second CPD? Well, I have. And it's just as well, because I didn't know what CPD stood for. But I do now, and I'm prepared. Interesting. Okay, so in that case, then, you're up for the challenge, eh? It strikes me that all we've got to do is suggest a challenge, and Sarah's going to go, yeah, Yeah. I can do that. Absolutely, yeah. It's almost unachievable. I can do that, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so... Let, let's say, well, should we pretend that you're up for the challenge then, Sarah? Yeah, I'm up for it. Do you okay, know what so I'm going to talk about? 60 second CPD on what's your going to be your chosen topic? My chosen topic is the difference between wood pigeons and feral pigeons. Oh, okay. So there's, okay. A vet, there's a veterinary uh, theme as well. So in that case, then, uh, I but guess it, tonight. Can I just interrupt and say I'm not a professional, I'm, a, I'm an enthusiastic amateur. So forgive me. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll delve into that in a moment then, perhaps. Okay. But for now, Sarah Cotton, 60-second CPD on the difference between 
wood pigeons and feral pigeons starting now. Wood pigeons are larger. They weigh approximately 500 grams. Feral pigeons weigh approximately 300 grams. Wood pigeons are always gray with a pink breast, white neck patches and have yellow eyes, apart from the juveniles that are gray. Feral pigeons are gray with a bluey green iridescence. They can be flecked with white or black. They can be all white or a brick red color, like a Trafalgar square pigeon. And they mm. have an orange or a black eye. Wood pigeons eat seeds, nuts, cabbages, peas, grains, and young shoots, and are the bane of the allotment keeper. Common pigeons, feral pigeons, eat seeds and cereals and young shoots. Wood pigeons make a twiggy nest in a tree. A feral pigeon nests in or on buildings and flat ledges. And they well. both two white eggs. <laughs> okay, very good. It's on the dot. 60 seconds. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Now, can I add a little interesting thing about a pigeon? Can I add the end of Go on, Nick, I've got a question for you, but go on. Well, pigeons see UV light, which means they can see the moon and the stars even in daylight. And it's thought that that's how they navigate. Oh. Like homing pigeons, racing pigeons. Hmm. How do they do that? That's how they do it. They see ultraviolet light. I heard it was a pineal gland in their beak that they use scent and they can pick up magnetic waves with. They, they can certainly pick up magnetic waves as well, and there are magnetic calculi within the semicircular canals that will wow. uh, do that. Oh, that's interesting. But the fact they can see the stars during the daytime yeah. is probably yeah. pretty, pretty useful. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. So how do you find out so much about pigeons then, Sarah? Oh, I'm a big pigeon fan. I, I, just, <laughs> I just sort of started... Well, I rescue anything and everything. I've rescued mice, rabbits, dogs, obviously. I've got blind dogs. I foster for blind dog rescue. And pigeons just came into my life. I have had chickens and ducks and things. Uh, now it's pigeons. And I've even raised a little pigeon who's next door from a little sort of two-day-old chick. A and squab. From a, yeah, well, he was sort of smaller than a squab. Um, you know, mm. squab squabs are sort of juveniles, no. but... Um, they're the most fascinating, fascinating creatures. They have, they're really sociable. They have a hierarchical system. They both the parents, incredible, incredible parents. You know, feeding the young. They both sit on the egg. They both feed the young, and they're just fascinating. Got huge personalities and are, are hugely underestimated. They're very, very clever, and they breed all year round. And I think the fact that they're common, mm -hmm. successful because they're clever. And, be, you know, if they were a rarity, people would, would think they were the most marvellous bird ever. But mm. I, I think they're the most marvellous bird. They're fascinating. Well, the, the, the passenger pigeon, which is now extinct, was once the most widespread, numerous bird in the world, wasn't it? I don't know, but I think wood pigeons number over 500 million pairs in this country or something ridiculous. Yeah, I think, I think the passenger pigeon was something like 2 billion in its heyday. Um. And um, was was hunted to extinction, you know, like the dodo. Like now, it depends when this comes out, doesn't it? But uh, I mean, like, the dodo like, related to a pigeon, isn't it? A colum columbidae. A, a columbidae, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, the the dove family. P pigeons do um, imprint onto humans, don't they? They 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 bond very closely. And and people who have racing pigeons, the the, the pigeons will navigate to some extent. They always go up. And they go, is it clockwise a couple of times or something? And then I, they I don't off. know. I don't know. But on the imprinting, I mean, I've, I've rescued many, many, many mm. pigeons. And I've made a, a, you know, on purpose, I haven't handled them too much. And I've, you know, they've always gone e either into an aviary or I've been able to release them or whatever. But this particular little pigeon that I've got now that I raised from a little tiny egg, I, I've always wanted to have like a pet pigeon. Yes. And so I purposely um, handled it a great deal, stroked it around its ears, and it is hugely imprinted on me. It mm. follows me up the stairs to the bathroom. It gets in the bath with me. It it just it just loves me. I mean, it do it does go out and it flies about yeah. with all the other feral pigeons. I make mm. it go out because obviously they poo a lot. <laughs> they they do. 
But yeah. he's the most delightful he, little chap. I, but he, gosh, he just loves me. Hmm, that's really you, can't, you, you can't house train them, can you? No, but apparently you can get little pigeon panties. <laughs> get pigeon panties. <laughs> they're little pigeon nappies, apparently. Because they just, Fantastic. They're, they're the, the, I get the, the point I was trying to make uh, about pigeons in printing is the, the racing pigeons will, will, when they fly home to somewhere, they will fly directly to the home, but they'll have a look and they won't just go in normally through the the dovecote window or, or wherever it is. If they see the the owner, then they'll fly directly to them rather than going into the dovecote. Yeah. E- I, I can call Bodie out of the sky. Hungry. Yeah, Bodie keep flying around with all the other pigeons. And I'll go, Bodie, Bodie, and he'll zoom, he'll, yeah, straight down. Amazing. It's incredible. Amazing. Yeah. Who, who's Birdie then? Birdie's my pigeon. Oh, this is the, the one we're talking about? Yeah, my little pigeon. But yeah, they fly to the to their human. Yeah. But they, yeah. they should really, you know, they're very, very sociable birds, so you shouldn't really keep a pigeon inside on its own. No. I mean, I do, I do have another pigeon in the kitchen that's um, a proper feral pigeon, wild but he's, I think he's, he can't fly. And I, he was in my garden for months under the hedge. And then mm. one day he just walked in and he, he went under, under the alga. And um, so I thought, all right, mate. So I feed him under the alga. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been there for weeks. <laughs> Wonderful. They, these, these pigeons communicate with each other, don't they? Oh, they chatter endlessly. Yeah. yeah. They're real talkers. You, you, wait, you wait till next week. You'll have another one. They're always trying to get in. Yeah. 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 You'll have one with one leg. I got well, one with one eye. But... Mike, Mike's working on the Disney film here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got one with one eye that, that's hovering about outside. Right. Yeah, I, th- I think they've, they've labelled you as a soft touch. Yeah, I love a pigeon. What can I say? You've just delivered a fabulous 60-second CPD <clears throat> on pigeons. Let's see if he's got a CPD certificate people can present to say that they have received 60-second CPD from your good self. So come on then, clever clogs. Do I have? I have. Here we go. Oh. I've got one here. And it says, it says, Certificate of Aquatic Learning. And aquatic. it says, this... Aquatic. Aquatic. Or aquatic. 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 Potato, potato. This certifies that we have bathed in the font of knowledge, perseverance, and sheer determination. Good swimming, everyone. And let, let's explain the pictures I've got here. So here is uh, one of your feral pigeons. Oh. And this, this is on uh, one of the statues in Hyde Park. I forget which one. It could be Cleopatra. A uh, little pigeon on the top of Cleopatra's statue in, uh, oh, in Hyde Park. There's, there's a, a ring of fire. Oh, is that them flying too, but... onto my table? No, 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 no. This, this, is, this, is, to, this is the journey that, that, that Sarah's been on. So the, 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 the fire fighting that she uh, oh. originally did. Right. Uh, to become a swimmer. And there we go. There's, there's me swimming. I've got a clam there that I oh, dug right. up from... And I'm just about to eat it. And and here's me swimming uh, with with someone. Uh, this is in Greece. And I was swimming. We were on a family holiday. And all of a sudden, this guy appeared next to me and said, "Hey, we friends." Uh, and he was much much bigger than me, so we became friends. Um, and so, <laughs> did he get his bungee strap out? <laughs> well, you know, I I added that where, once Sarah had mentioned the bungee. Because I thought he would have been a great person. He was huge. He would have been a great person to have if there was this little climbing thing. I can imagine I'd do the swimming and pull him along, and he'd do the climbing, and I'd be hanging upside down from the bungee while he just climbed. Just accosted you in the sea, didn't he? He just accosted me, hey, we're friends. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm happily married. I don't want that sort of friend thinking. (laughs) What was his name? I never found out. I was a bit, I was a bit afraid to talk I'm to him. Friend, you are, mate. <laughs> oh. Sorry, uh, Martin. Uh, <laughs> now this is this is me. This is me swimming in a 
a glacial stream wow. in uh, near Mont Blanc. Oh, it was. Uh, you can see there's some ice there at the bottom of that waterfall. It was at naught degrees and it was bloody cold. So when I say swimming, I was surviving. You're, in that. you're standing there actually. Like, yeah. Doing your full Wim yeah. Hof Iceman impression. It, it, it took, about the uh, polar bear challenge. I tell you, yeah, it took about a week to get me winky back after that. I went, I went like <laughs> hot water bottles pulled. Anyway, moving on, moving on. This, this would have been the view I imagine you saw uh, oh. swimming to, uh, to 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 France. And the final shot uh, you may recognise is the coast of Jersey. Because the one thing you didn't mention is oh, it's the, Jersey. absolutely it's swam <laughs> around Jersey. Oh, wow! I've I've swum in the seas around Jersey. They're not warm, nor is the tide particularly friendly. No, oh, the tide's wicked. It's awful. Lots of, swam, Lots of ships it. are lost in the tides around Jersey and Guernsey. Mm. Yeah, it was a proper race though, so we were relatively safe. But yeah, yeah lovely. I like around. the piece irrelevancy. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And that was a relay, was it? I did a two person relay. Normally, yeah. obviously, it's a six person, but um, we did a two person relay and it, um, yeah, it took 10 hours. Wow. 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 Amazing. Yeah, Gosh. Brilliant well, I, th- we could go on for hours. Uh, we could just do more and more and more because it seems as though everything you've done, you've done to a level of excellence and perfection that, that most of us would only hope to, to achieve. Uh, however, I feel we've taken enough of your time for tonight. And I'm going to pass on to Mike to do the wind up of the session because I'm just overwhelmed. I think you've done an absolutely fantastic job and deserve the CBD certificate. Truly oh. inspirational stuff, Sarah, and I really You're appreciate you sharing you. sharing what you've uh, what you have shared with us. And as Julian says, I'm sure there's a whole load more that we haven't even started on at this point in time. But uh, it leaves me to say that if you've enjoyed listening to Sarah and her stories and uh, and been inspired by what she's achieved and is going to continue to achieve, I have no doubt. Um, then don't forget to click like, subscribe, tell your friends. And if there's anything you'd like us to cover in a forthcoming episode, let us know and we'll see what we can put in on our next episode of Veterinary Ramblings. Sarah Cotton, thank you so, so much. It's been amazing. Thank you, Julian. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. So if I had a glass, I'd be raising it to you. And I've got a glass. Wishing you all the best and may your dog go with you. <laughs> May your dog go with you. Brilliant. Cheers. Cheers. And cut. Wow. Sarah. You were you <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I quite enjoyed it. Good. Yeah, it was fun. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you did fantastically. It's been a wonderful evening. And, and, um, and I think, I'm sure that actually people watching this or listening to it will will be amused, as they often are, hopefully. But I'm, I'm also sure they'll be inspired. So oh, thank you so much for that. Thank really. you. Very kind. Thank you. Thank you ever so much, Sarah. See you soon. Take care. Take care. See you soon. Hey, Mike. Do you want to hear a joke? Go on. Two veterinary podcasters walk into a room and one says to the other, Oh, shit, I forgot to press record. Oh, tune in next week when we chat with fellow podcaster Francisco Gomez, the voice behind More Than Just a Vet podcast. Stay tuned. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.